Good morning, good evening, and good night, wherever you may be watching this transmission from all over the Commonwealth. It is I, Mike Martins, bringing you a very important Bloomberg article, guys. Tomorrow is Wednesday uh, here. It's still it's still uh, Tuesday uh, for another five more minutes here. And Fed's first in a decade intervention will be repeated on Wednesday. So, guys, you remember what happened with the quantitative quantitative easing and pushing to keep interest rates artificially low, uh, speculative bubbles in everything, and the major one that really crippled the day-to-day -day Joe Donuts, day-to-day -day average person is the housing. A lot of people in their day-to-day -day jobs and a lot of people in the whole, in the, you know, just the nine-to-fivers, blue-collar workers, they really don't care about the stock markets and the markets and the banks. They don't, really don't care, and I don't blame them. But now, you know, this time around, housing is severely effective, uh, affected. Now, it was in the United States. But see, in the United States, it was a little bit different because when I was in Miami when that was going down. And it's kind of weird because the housing was like the average house, let's say, in Orlando went from 195 to 300,000, right? The average house in, in uh, what was it, Pensacola went from like 110 to 225. The average one-bedroom condo, let's say in Fort Lauderdale, went from seventy-seven thousand for a one-bedroom to like two hundred thousand. So, fair enough. But then you got the Commonwealth that basically opened up its doors to rich investors, and that's why we've been having a housing bubble for years now. That's why we've been having a housing bubble for for almost a decade now, uh, since pretty much the 2012, 20, 2010 Olympics. Why? Because artificially low rates but the amount of huge movements of money coming into the commonwealth whether it's from into canada whether it's into australia whether it's into new zealand and whether it's into the united kingdom and it has brought down a lot of average joes or joe donuts uh, more ways than you could ever imagine now what are they thinking of doing instead of letting the economy run on autopilot and allowing things to kind of fall apart on their own so we could basically let the, let the reset button happen naturally so then we could bring up rates and then we could start bringing up but they won't do it they're doing everything in their plan they're using every tool in their toolbox i mean just throwing everything at this and the problem is people are borrowing more to, be, to, to meet basic consumption, and that's food, right? And then this generation we're in now, our governments are saying, well, this generation is much more comfortable with, with debt compared to older generations. Well, I'm an older generation. I don't carry debt. I don't want debt. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, nowadays, it's just you see the younger generations taking out loans for a microwave, a dishwasher, uh, you know, back in the day, you could, you, you know, back in the day, when someone owned a Mercedes in the early 80s, that person had, that that person had buck because there was no auto financing. Like, it was really hard to get auto financing back in the day because banks knew the appreciation of vehicles once you drive them off the lots. They wouldn't finance vehicles back in the day. And if you had a Mercedes back in 1984, you were, you were the king of the, of the road. People would w move aside to watch you pass. And be like, that guy's got money. Now, everyone could just finance a Mercedes now. And it's really hard to, yeah, it's, yeah, the status, you know, the status. And the whole status is is, is no good. And, and, and it's just how the housing market got snuffed and, and, and into this whole, this whole, this whole bank twilight zone. And feds and policymakers and these super groups, these groups that are coming together in Australia right now to ban cash or to try and ban uh, to withdraw of money. So we're going to have the Raven on the show on uh, Mike in the Night on Saturday night. Hopefully he's awake 
because he, we're going to be talking about how he went to the bank and his bank declined him to give him his money. So I'm going to leave it for him to tell you the story if he wants to. We're not going to mention the bank name, but I, I'm, I'm, I wasn't in shock at all when he told him. I'm like, so what? I'm not in shock. He's like, really? I was in total shock. I'm like, dude, <laughs> where do you think we're headed? You know? And uh, weak manufacturing, this last quarter was one of the weak manufacturing quarters since the Great Depression. And that's the scary part. And, and, and people are just spending more than what they make. And governments are spending more than what they tax. And this is becoming the biggest problem. Okay, so here it is, guys. This is a very important, important article, guys. It's under Bloomberg's Economics. Fed's first in a decade intervention will be repeated Wednesday. Central Bank is taking action after a key lending rate spiked. Turmoil signals the Fed is losing control of short-term rates. Oh, God, I've already seen my three. Um, you've already reached your free article limit six dollars okay let's see what they say here terms of trade is a daily newsletter okay the federal reserve took action to to calm money markets injecting billions in cash to quell the surge in short-term rates that was pushing up its policy benchmark rate and threatening to drive up borrowing costs for companies and consumers. The central bank also said it, it's willing to spend another $75 billion on Wednesday. Wow. Okay, let's find this here. If we can't find it, what we'll do... Here it is. So a lot of these websites don't even write those stories. They just rip them off other ones. Okay, here we go, guys. We found it. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York announced plans to inject another $75 billion into the U.S. financial system when trading resumes on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to be awake for that, man. A day after markets, its first such intervention in more than a decade alleviate the funding pressures in short-term lending markets. This, this is, it's just going against everything we were taught on how, how we were taught how things are done. And then it's just going right against, it's like a slap in the face. You know what I'm saying? The cost of uh, borrowing cash overnight via repurchasing agreements known as repos surged on Tuesday morning to high 10%, a more than a fourfold increase from Monday uh, morning, according to Refinitiv uh, 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 Data. So I posted that here on the YouTube channel. Guys, jump aboard my channel. There's all kinds of cool stuff happening in my life here. It's on their community. I posted this. This was sent to me by my man on the ground, Andrew, who is on the ground. There it is there, the overnight repo rate. Oh, there's a comment. There's two comments. I like the sound of credit crunching. And then someone says, goodbye, American dream. That's exactly right there in one sentence. The cost of borrowing cash overnight via repurchase. Okay, we, we known as repos surged on Tuesday morning as high as 10%, more than a fourfold increase from Monday morning, according to the data. A senior executive at a large U.S. bank said the sharp rise in the so-called repo rate reflected a pretty sizable dislocation between funding needs and funding in key proportion to the U.S. money market. So they're, they're trying hard to fill the, the gaps, not the void. There's this delta here. It's not working. Repos are virtual to the financial system because they give companies access to cash overnight using U.S. treasuries as collateral. Ashisha Shash co-chief in, in investment officer for fixed income at Goldman, uh, Goldman Sachs Asset Management, described the abrupt tightening of the U.S. money market a big deal. So there's something in, oh, it's right here. It's the quotations on the right here. When things like this happen, it increases the uncertainty and leaves fixed income markets jittery. 
and that is the job of central banks to avoid, he said. I said they were going to start going after money markets and stuff. I said that a few weeks ago, actually. The sharp rise in the repo rate created a predicament for the Fed just as top policymakers were meeting in Washington to make a decision on monetary policy. Because it pushes up the central bank's benchmark interest rate, the so-called federal funds rose to 2.25%, the very top of the range of the central bank targets, from 2.14% at the end of last week. In response, the New York Fed, which conducts market operations for the central bank, launched an operation to help maintain the federal funds rate within the target range. So here it is, the repo rate surges. Oof. I, I can't even see that, man. The shine. The New York Fed made up to $75 billion available through the repo uh, auction in which the Fed accepts treasuries. Okay, and other securities as collateral, and in exchange provides cash. The facility had not previously been used in such a scale since 2008. And you guys remember what happened in 08, right? Remember what happened? Uh, who sings that song? Run to the hills. Who sings Run to the Hills? Is it Metallica? Run to the hills. Anyways, run to the hills. The bank had, a, had to cancel operation on the first attempt due to technical issues. On the second effort, primary dealers, big banks that act as trading uh, counterparties of the Fed, tapped the, fi the, tapped the facility for $53 billion. The operation appeared to have succeeded in calming the money markets. Yeah. The repo rate tumbled soon after the New York Fed announced its action. The New York Fed said on Tuesday afternoon that it would repeat the operation on Wednesday morning during a 15-minute window before 8.30 a.m., again offering to inject $75 billion into financial market. Oh, well, if this happens, you're going to see metals go down. You're going to start to see the things that actually are valuable start to lose value right now or lose ground. Or it could backfire and things could get out of hand. I'm so looking forward for tomorrow's market day. Bank executive, executives and analysts said several factors were behind the abrupt rise in the repo rate. Lender reserves above legally required amounts have been declining since the Fed ended its bond buying program in 2014. Oh, yes. You start buying back your, you stop buying your own debt back. Whee! Reducing the amount of cash are willing to lend through repo operations. So there it is, guys. The U.S. federal funds rate. And that's the, the upper target right there. And it's obviously uh, targeted for today's, today's date. Uh, that was two days ago. The system came under additional stress in recent days as companies pulled cash out to pay tax bills. More cash left in the system as investors settled treasury purchases after a flurry of recent in ensuance. We think that the culprit of this scarcity of bank reserves, which are the only asset that provides banks with intraday liquidity, said TD Securities, reserves have been declining since 2014. Well, you see... Well, banks have been working on this whole fractional reserve crap. There's no liquidity in the banks. They've even announced, uh, what is it, that one, that one in, uh, that, uh, that idiot bank in Australia, what's it called? It's, uh, Westpac? They don't, they don't have two nickels to rub together. They got, like, they, they have, I, I don't know, like 8% of liquidity. They can't even leverage anything. So if there's one major default, some, or some several major defaults, or everything that's tied to mortgages and all that crap down in New Zealand, or Australia, those banks have no way to leverage against that. They, they've severely deleveraged, hoping that the the the, Feder, the feds will come in and and bail them out and, and and kind of keep this going, right? And Japan's been doing it for the last twenty years with this whole zombified, this zombie bank nation they're in right now. And yeah, we'll get into that another day. But but you know what I'm saying, right? I think it has to do with uh, neo neoliberalism and it's. It's, it's 
changing of, 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 um, I guess renegotiating the rules as they see fit, I guess, or renegotiating rules as they see fit to keep it going, I guess. Re uh, reserves have been declining since 2014 as we expect them to decline further as treasuries, cash balance increases, and currency in circulation grows. But the more currency in circulation, you want to you want less currency in circulation so your money will be valuable or have some sort of monetary value. Christ. A senior executive in the repo operation of the big U.S. bank added that recent issues were not the same as the causes of spikes in overnight lending rates during financial crisis. This is a money markets phenomena, not something that has to do with... Uh, Perceptions of credit quality at the banks or anywhere else, he said. Additional reporting by Michael McKenzie. Thanks for guys for posting this. This is this is this is a big deal, guys. It's like robbing Peter to pay Paul. Right? But the the, the the bizarre thing about this is the left hand knows what the right hand is doing. So they're all in this with two hands. It's not like $75 billion. That's not going to help. It's just going to keep it going. It's kicking the can down the road. Why can't they leave? You see, when the markets start correcting, you start seeing metals go up. You start seeing uh, all kinds of funny stuff happening in the markets, right? And then they, they want to stop that. So what is oh a drone attack and then oil oil starts going up. They try to rattle the cages with the oil, but the oil kept um well oil went up for a day. And then it's like um let's check out the um Australian markets that are open right now. How many hours left till the market closes? Oh, market's closed. Markets. Okay, the market closed. Okay, I was watching it earlier today. Okay, so the All Ords is down. The ASX uh, 200 is down. The Australian dollar is going to hit 76, uh, 67 cents. You wish 76. 67 cents very, very soon. Oil still under $59 a barrel. It went from 62, 63. Uh, gold still over above 1500. Bitcoin is rallying right now. It's above 10K US. Australian is failing to the euro, and oh, the FTSE is open right now. Sorry, it's the uh, the European Stock Exchange is open right now, and yeah, they're they're climbing, they're climbing, and it's and it's pushing the Australian to the New Zealand dollar right there. Dow Jones just closed above. And the Nikkei is, is down, of course, because the other markets. Mm. Anyways, guys. It's going to be a very interesting day tomorrow in the markets. I, I'm looking extremely forward to see um, what's going to happen. It's just... Uh, uh, they're just destroying the fundamental structures in the bank like they got the glass steel act and all the different laws that were put into place to protect the consumer and the consumers funds that are in the bank protected or insured up to a certain amount i mean they're just banks are taking it to the casinos and basically betting on the stock market and high risk stocks and Anyways, let me know what you uh, what you um, think of these reform policies and how you know, especially in Australia right now, with them looking to um, ban cash. They're they're on the road. They they started with ten thousand. You can't you can't withdraw, or if you deposit, start asking you questions, and then it's five. Now it's three. Now they're talking about two thousand dollars, right? 
then one day you're going to be paying for your groceries like 700 bucks. And they're going to be like, I'm going to have to ask you questions on where you got this money to buy these groceries. And it's like, well, I spend that much every two weeks. What do you want from me? You, you know what I mean, right? I don't know, guys. You're going to have to fill me in down in the comments below because... It's going to be an interesting one tomorrow. How is it going to react? There's two ways, three ways, actually. I want you guys to comment below and let me know what you guys think. I, I look forward to reading your comments. Guys, don't forget to follow me on YouTube also and, and join. There's all kinds of cool stuff. I'm, I'm live a lot. Also, don't forget to follow me. I'm also on uh, Instagram. I want to thank earlier somebody sent me a big tip. Uh, today, um, here in my tip jar, my channel, I want to thank them for that big time. Uh, Patreon, don't forget to join Patreon and become a supporter. I got 16 Patreon supporters. And uh, yeah, support this transmission. And uh, I will do my best for you guys to create conversation and uh, get word out there, man. Don't forget to join me tomorrow night for trends in the housing market. Um, from entire commonwealth in the united states talking about what is setting trends in the housing market also uh saturday night mike in the night um we're gonna have the raven on he's got a story and a half to tell us so i'm very looking forward to for that thanks so much for watching guys i really appreciate everything and if you want to uh share a video from my channel go ahead and do that i'd appreciate that very much thanks guys and have a good night guys